and then we talk about it for 20 minutes, and then we decide I was right. First of all, I think we've got more skillful players than you to take corners, and secondly, you're the b one of the best in the club. Get in there. That's what I pay you for. My mum says to me, why can't you be like Bob Wilson? She says, why can't you be nice and intelligent and calm and collected like Bob and not upset anybody and Bob doesn't swear and Bob doesn't do that? And, you know, if she's not careful, I shall just uh, renege completely and uh, my man will have a new son and they'll call him Bob Wilson Clough. It was all so brash, so breathtaking, so invigorating and for Derby, unique, their first championship. To go to the baseball ground was to wish you could play. Pinson, he's got Hector up with him. The others are arriving fast. Webster! Oh, yes! We excited, uh, and what happened was we were in such a situation at the baseball ground, everybody who came there was an intimate member of the place. We literally could lean over and touch. And when I used to sit in the director's box at one period of the time, I could literally whisper to any outside left or outside right that I had working with me. I had you never whisper to anybody. No, I know, but life. I could. <laughs> and I didn't have to shout at the baseball ground. I had conversations with Alan Hinton many, many times because he's literally within touching distance. And everybody who came to the ground, whether it be journalists or whether it be supporters, home or away supporters, and players were infected by this. People ask me what I did over six years, and I find it difficult to isolate a month, or two months, or six months, because there was so much to do, and so much to get on with, that everything was just a blur at, at, at times. The former goal scorer chose an ex-goalkeeper for a partner. Together, they brought style to the unfashionable. Hold it, hold it! In our relationship, is uh, my brothers. On, Whenever we have a crisis, we have many, he never fails me. And consequently, we thought right from the beginning, from our early days at Harley Pools when we first started management, that together we could have success quicker together than we could individually. If there was a balance, it was the two particular uh, people, uh, Taylor and myself, doing the jobs to the best of their ability and good at the jobs. Um, and it was never an infringement when you, when you stepped on anybody's toes in the early days, you know. We had groundsmen, for example, a famous baseball ground that was an absolute tragedy to play on football-wise, but it suited us. So when the pitch had to be dug up, we all dug it up. When we had to fork it, we forked it, and we swept terraces as well, first division players, uh, and had happy times. If, if you were if you'd ask me to pinpoint the, the most important thing that happened at the baseball ground over a period of time was, we were all young together for a start. You know, 15 years ago, even I looked a wee bit younger, uh, and was younger, and, and still regarded myself as a player, not as a manager. I finished playing when I was 28, and I took over Derby when I was possibly nearly 30, and regarded myself as a player. His teammates changed little during the season, but they were key bricks, essential to the team's foundation and its success. Roy McFarlane was a ball-playing centre-half. McFarlane coming up. <laughs> well, centre-halves or centre-forwards, they don't score better headed goals than that. Colin Tov was McFarlane's partner at the heart of the defence, and like him, exuded class. Colin Todd actually provided a bit of embarrassment because David McKay was still there. When I signed Colin Todd in the March, uh, it was a case of I played Colin Todd at full-back, actually. But David eventually left, and then everything took it, uh, dropped into place. Hector seems to be finding a bit of room. Again, he had a chance for a shot. Todd! Oh, With Durban and Gemmell in midfield, John McGovern was on the face of it an unlikely cornerstone. One director said to me, what have you brought us, a splather-footed, I always remember him describing John McGovern as a splather-footed, uh, innocuous, frail, weakling and all that type of thing, which as opposed to the unlearned eye, that's exactly what he was. Uh, and it was a typical director's opinion. And they've never changed over the years, have they? They still don't have any idea, directors don't. Gemmell. To McGovern. Fifteen goals made Alan Hinton top scorer, but
but that was but a bonus. Alan Hinton wasn't the, uh, he wasn't a Dave Mackay, for example. He was an outside left and a cultured player, a man with um, exclusive ability at crossing a ball with either foot. But of course, somebody had to get in the ball to give him it. And nobody uh, used to understand things like that. Well, of course, we surrounded Alan Hinton with people who could just get the ball and give it to him. And after that, he just sat back then and savoured whatever he, he dished up. And he dished up two or three years of world-class outside left play. April Fool's Day provided the crucial moments of a tight championship race. Derby were at home to Leeds. The end was curious in the extreme. Leeds and Liverpool failed while Derby were on holiday. The team in Mallorca, the manager with his family in the Silly Isles. Well, it was all arranged, and when you've got three kids under five, as they were at that time, your mum and dad hadn't been abroad that many times, then uh, you don't put uh, things off for uh, the odd match that was getting played somewhere else. We were either going to win it, or if I could have gone down to the opposition and, and stopped them winning or something like that, I'd have done that. But I couldn't, we just had to wait, and it turned out well. That's what made the Derby Championship much more intimate and better than the one I eventually won at Forest. It was because of the people around me. Not very often you get to the peak, surrounded with your mum and dad and your wife and your three kids. I mean, it, it's difficult with all the things you've done to say that was the high point of your career, but I suspect that half There was, there was laughs all along the line. I remember I used to drink champagne in those days. Over a period of time, I think I've drank a few bottles of champagne, and of course champagne was ordered in the hotel. And I was sharing my champagne, which I've done all my life. I've, I've shared my fags and my champagne and my fish and chips and shared everything I have. But of course, the people in Tresco Hotel weren't interested in football. Now, and I think they were a little bit um, embarrassed taking champagne when they didn't know who the hell we were. They, didn't, they hadn't heard of Derby County, and they thought I was one of the queer buggers walking around their hotel. Little did they know they were the queer buggers, not me, and they'd shut themselves away in this hotel where they hadn't heard of Derby County. Europe heard of them to the semi-final against Juventus, where Clough felt they were cheated. He would depart amid acrimony before the chance came again. The applause as Archie Gemmell lifted the championship trophy in 75 was for Dave Mackay's team. Mackay changed the face and to some extent the style of the side. Peter Daniel was promoted to replace the injured McFarland. The rest were bought. Bruce Rioc, the top scorer from midfield, and Francis Lee, the most influential. Brian Clough left a lot of great players here, and they're still here. And I hope they're still enjoying the football. It's a gradual sort of takeover. As players get older, I've got to bring players in. And I can only be judged on bringing in the players. I bring in Bruce Rioc to score goals, which he's doing. Francis Lee to entertain, to score goals, which he's doing. Uh, his ins inspiration, I think, came from Fanny Lee. It was absolutely inspired signing, that was. And Fanny Lee was a similar type to David, in a dressing room, off and on the pitch, and everything bubbled when he was around. And he finished up scoring a few goals, and Derby went on to win another championship, which was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. You can't get better than winning the Football League. And David McKay never got enough credit for it, actually. I got a bit of the credit. Uh, by leaving six or seven or eight players, but David Mackay did more work than people give him credit for and signed some good players. He signed Bruce Rioch, I think, and Charlie George and that type of thing. Typical flair players as David wanted to portray the game. Rioch! Gemmell. Brave header by Newton, who now has a chance. Goal superbly. Lee. Interesting. Very interesting. Oh! Look at his face. Just look at his face. The high pitch of celebration carried briefly into Europe. George! Oh, I take cracker! But all too soon, Mackay was gone and Derby lost in the wilderness. Their old Just voice would be back the before they were. Listen for the shout. <laughs>